Verse 18, my little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Let us not just love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. In other words, what he's saying here is that real love is made in the kitchen. When you see that wife bending over a hot stove cooking for that man, that man is out yonder making a living for her. And it's pretty silly if you take love out of it. Why should he work for her? Why should she work for him? But it's a love relationship. And Christianity should be that kind of a relationship. Now, he moves into something here that's quite interesting. He says, and by this we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. Now, this is what gives an assurance when we come before God in prayer. Very frankly, as he's made it very clear, it's possible to be ashamed at the appearing of Christ. A great many folk today are talking about the coming of Christ, but they don't seem to be doing anything. Now, when you and I come into his presence, it's going to be a very awesome experience because he's going to demand some fruit. What have you been doing? If you love me, keep my commandments. And one of them is, is to get the word of God out. Take it to the ends of the earth. Are you involved in that in any way? Are you involved in anything that reveals that you're a child of God? That is the important thing. And I think that was true when I was a boy living in the country. How wonderful it was expressed then. Nobody got sick, but what all the neighbors came in and helped. Now, we've come a long ways, and I know today that there are all kinds of new methods of doing things, but I'll be very frank with you. I'd sure like to get back to that day when the neighbors did come in and did help, and the neighbors did take an interest, and today we expect that some bureau of the government is going to take care of the individual and that they will be taken to the hospital, which is the best place for them and all that sort of thing. But a great many Christians are not getting involved in actually the thing that the Lord is interested in, and we're going to have to give an account before him someday. Now, here he's saying, my little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And by this we know that we are of the truth, and we shall assure our hearts before him. Now, this is what gives an assurance, and this is very important. But now he makes this statement, verse 20, and this is very important to see. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. Now, if you are a child of God and you are using your substance, and I don't care who you are, whether you're poor or rich, that you're doing something to get the Word of God out. God gives you an assurance in your heart that you're in His will, that you're doing the thing that He wants done. And then you have an assurance when you go before Him in prayer. You have an assurance that when you stand before Him someday. Paul knew. Paul says, henceforth is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. I know now about that. The child of God today can have an assurance. But suppose we're not doing what we should do, and that's quite possible. Does it mean we've lost our salvation, or maybe we didn't have it to begin with? Well, listen to him. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. Well, we don't lose our salvation. Because if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart, greater than our lack of assurance. And he's going to hear our prayer. Isn't he a wonderful God that when we fail him, he won't fail us? And though you don't have any assurance when you go before him, and a great many Christians come to him really empty-handed, I've done nothing for you, Lord. I've done nothing at all. Yet I'm coming to you in prayer. Well, God's greater than your heart. He'll hear your prayer. He's going to deal with you. He may not answer the prayer as you're praying it, and chances are he won't. But God's going to hear, 
and answer according to his will. For if our heart condemn us, God's greater than our heart, and he knoweth all things. You can depend on him, even if you don't have assurance, friend. Just keep going to him with it. As I told a young fellow that's an alcoholic, he said, I've prayed about this. I said, go pray some more. <laughs> he says, well, I just don't feel now I have any assurance at all. I failed him so. I said, he knows your heart. You apparently are sincere. The way you're talking to me, I believe you're sincere. I believe you mean business. And I know this, God's going to give you a deliverance for it. You don't have any assurance. Of course you don't. You failed him. But he's greater than your heart. And he knows you. If he knows that you're sincere in this and you failed him, God is going to deal with you. You can depend on it. And God's going to give that young man 